Hi, this is Art Basel 2023, the most important, the most hyped art fair in the world. Everyone is here this year and we are here to cover it. So you'll see a lot of arts, some interviews, maybe some critics. Let's check it out. Beautiful works, German artists, Alexander Bricke, Wolfgang Tillmans, and many others. Tell us, please, something about, about your this year's presentation. Well, when we are coming to Basel, we really want to show a cross-section of what the gallery does. And we've been working with Wolfgang Tillmans for many, many years. We were showing him first in 1993. And then we are so proud to be having him here. Um, he's part of our program, but also a great part of the art world and makes a contribution that's so significant for so many people. So to have this work here from 2008, um, this is something so special. Um, this is Paul Anders Villa Rossi. And this work has not been shown before in Basel. So often when we bring things here, we're bringing works that haven't been seen before and we're really showing them for the first time in Basel. So this is something that's special. Um, the same thing has happened with, you know, like Alexander Birkin. This piece is a piece we've just started working with her, but I've known her since 1993 or four when she actually was being photographed and as a friend and about Wolfgang about months. for such a long time. So we had had involvement through me buying a work from BQ Gallery from Berlin when they were in Cologne, is back in the day. And now we're very delighted to be representing her together with BQ and also with Herald Street Gallery from London. So we're all part of the community, like supporting her as an artist. I told you we are from Slovakia and we see Robert Gabriš, which is very lovely. So can you maybe tell us something about these works and your presentation? Yeah, I mean, we show here, I mean, we show several works, but here on display now, you see one work, which he has done specially for the art fair. This is here, this beautiful work, uh, which has been done recently, a few weeks ago okay. in preparation. It's a kind of a very intimate work. And then we show on the right side, this is like from the show which we had recently in Vienna in our space. Uh, it was called Body Body Shop. And this is like some work which is related to the construction of body uh, in general and also like within his themes which he did, uh, developed in, in, uh, in his show. And this kind of a new approach because he used to draw a lot or do some objects or some performances, but these are like collages or like uh, what's the what's the thing? like uh, yeah collages it's like there it starts with this um of the fact that a few um drawings he was really not very happy with mm -hmm. he called them distro like destroyed drawings and then he cut them out like some details of that and this from this this is he he made something which is collage like but he would not call it collage because the the background is that that it derives from another drawing, Clean. and from this principle, which he kind of worked on, also this this work derives, and it's related to it's a kind of a scan of it, of of body. So there is like some parts which reminds us to human beings, and some parts are kind of animal like uh, yeah, yeah, parts, yeah, yeah. and that's a kind of a, a f f f fantastic approach towards the construction of body also like mindset, yeah. but it also has to do with certain kind of ideas of um, a body which is not only bipolar, bipolar, yes. but it has also like, it's not only in the sexual meaning, but also like in, in different kind of uh, approaches. Yeah, he had the, the, per the performative work about, about those insects. And insects, yeah. exactly, yes. Already, so, so there is, since several years, there is this kind of um, two, 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 two motives one of them is the human body and the other one is very often insects and, and birds which come across. And of course the ident ident identity and, and, and the queerness and these are like... A sure, 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 sure. I mean, this is like... But, but one, one part of that is the sexual issue. Yes, the yes. other one is the is this, uh, societal issue. And this is, of course, coming together. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.
worked with Monica Bonvicini since almost 10 years. Okay. And we decided to show here at Art Basel at Unlimited an uh, enormous installation that's called Never Again. And uh, these are swings where you can lie in. It uh, has a connotation of sadomasochistic practices. There is leather, there is steel. But on the other side, it's also very fun. Yes. So it's a very political and uh, social, but also sexual uh, field where she's working. And what we have here is it's a mirror that is not only a mirror but, uh, because it's a, a very strong stainless steel mm -hmm. thing behind. And uh, well, if you want to, you could use them. Yes. For yourself or for somebody. Someone. Yeah. yeah. And what is happening then, then you have a dialogue, a dialogue between yourself or somebody else in this situation. Um, she leaves it open. It's not that she's political in one direction, but it's these behaviors that we have between man and woman, between who is uh, yeah. who has the power and who has not the power. So it's this whole field and she's playing with that. Mm -hmm. And how are these works related to her show in Neue National Gallery in Berlin? Because the aesthetic well, is very strange. Well, in, in Neue National Gallery, there were every two meters huge. I know, I've been there, so yeah, I see the, real, the reference. And the public was uh, asked to use them. Mm -hmm. And you had to stay them there at least for 15 minutes, mm -hmm. so for a certain period. And so you become part of the show. Yes. And you look at the show and you're in the show. So it's again, these who is where and yes. on which level of the. Plus, there was a very like strong poetic part of the installation outside of the gallery. I mean, the big mirror, I do, I do you, I do you. And behind the gallery, there was like a sound, sound installation. There was another the sound part. installation is a very interesting piece because what you would hear is every piece she did in her life. So it's her whole oeuvre, and you just hear it's raining her titles. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I get it. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. We are heading to Unlimited to check the, the, okay. the monumental work, so we are looking forward to it. Thank you so much. This year's at Basel, we are showing Three pieces by, by Roman Ondag and we selected uh, this planet yes. uh, and a sculpture entitled Third Way. And Third Way is a piece from 2013 and it shows uh, how Roman Ondag is playing with yes. found elements like the uh, old wooden leather that uh, he used for this piece and combines it with a, a miniature uh, step ladder that was uh, made for the sculpture. Mm -hmm. And the two pieces or these two ladders are intertwined. So the small ladder is placed in the big one. Uh, and the title is referring to a third way. So usually you can mm -hmm. go up and down, mm -hmm. but Roman hints at a possible third way. Yeah. But actually there is also a contradiction within the work. You mm -hmm. can read it on many levels. It could be uh, a political statement yes. it's it's a statement ab about everyday life and about uh, taking new approaches and new uh, opening up new possibilities he is dealing with these everyday experiences so you can in a way instantly connect to these works because it's familiar objects but uh, he opens up new ways of thinking uh, new ideas uh, yesterday someone said she had to think of a very minimal Last Supper when she saw okay. this work, wow. which I found a really yeah, that's interesting. interesting thought and a very personal um, yeah, idea. I, I, I think it's always been in his work, this, this like everyday life, like, you know, the very, one well, of the very first works, which was uh, like uh, internationally well known, was the cars behind the Secession in Vienna. It's and something, it was just something very, very like the everyday life. Uh, that time in nineties, but also you know the um, the installation at Venice Biennale, the loop. It was so beautiful and so so like and simple. Still talking about it, yeah, so no, when we when we uh, meet uh, new collectors or 
if people ask about the work and you say Roman Ondag and mention the work in Venice, every, everyone who has seen it remembers. So it's a, this kind of inversion or this, yeah. uh, in a way, a very subtle um, intervention mm -hmm. that you might notice or yes. not. Or some people even thought in Venice that he had placed the, the pavilion on top ah. of the garden. Okay. So they noticed that there was something off, but mm. but not mm. exactly what what yes, it was. Yes. I believe it was like the same with the cars. That's for someone it was just cars. Yeah, but lately there is this space topic somehow became or the universe topics became to his work with, with all these plans. And mm, I also believe the show in the Paris was about about uh, the the Mars. I believe you know the Mars, and yes. which is actually also uh, an older piece. He he made a reconstruction of the surface of Mars. Yes. In an exhibition, I think it was in the Kunstverein Cologne in 2005. So the whole space was filled with the right. with um, a replication of the surface of Mars based on on images he had found in newspapers, uh, and you could also enter the space. And then he had these Mars stones, which were presented under a, a, a glass case, so a very old-fashioned museum presentation, and people were irritated because they actually thought it was a real Mars stone, but of course, yeah. so far, no one has been to the Mars to bring back a stone. Okay, it was lovely to talk to about the Roman uh, and thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. My name is Kendra Jane Patrick, uh, and I run a gallery after my name, nice. Kendra Jane Patrick. Uh, and this is actually my first showing at Art Basel. Right. Uh, we decided to show an artist named Sharona Franklin. Sharona is based um, maybe two or so hours outside of Vancouver okay. uh, in a place called Merritt, British Columbia. Uh, Sharona really makes work, I think, dealing with chronic disability, which she has. But I think most importantly, this is a show about time. Right. And in particular, what she calls crypt time, right? As a reclamation, right, of the word crypt. Um, but also to describe the sort of strange time wavelength that you find yourself on when you're chronically disabled, right? Mm -hmm. So it isn't the same sort of experiences as you wake up, uh, right? You go to school or work, you come home, right? And instead, her experience is fully, fully dictated, right? By um, what her body wants to do that day. And, you know, when you look at these objects, right? They, they're sort of this, um, they really combine and preserve evidence of her sort of institutional medical accoutrement as long as or excuse me uh, as well as with her sort of homeopathic natural indigenous it's you know I mean for example indigenous right uh, um, her ways around thinking about healing and so what she calls it the way she refers to this experience of time is the psychedelia of new healing and that's sort of how she comes to these very strange strange shapes um, I think What's really important about the work is that it is um, pig gelatin is sort of the base material. Mm -hmm. And I think that really kind of is connected to the fact that uh, she takes a lot of stem cell treatments mm -hmm. for her autoimmune uh, disorder. And these stem cell treatments, right, are controversial in and of themselves. Um, but as is her use of anim animal gelatin, right, as we think uh, more clearly uh, about how we treat animals, right, and how we want to relate to them uh, in this sort of time and era. So, right, this pig gelatin is this material that encases, um, like I said, all of these sort of medical accoutrements. And I think, you know, this psychedelia of new healing, as she calls it, right, this kind of combination, is how you get these strange, really uncanny shapes. Wow, thank you so much. You're thank so you so welcome. much. Hi, well, thank you for asking me and being curious about what we do at ACB and about Selma's work. Uh, well, Selma's piece is, as you can see, um, parts, uh, dismantled parts of a Mercedes Benz. Mm -hmm. So she has done a piece like this beforehand. So there is a kind of, not prototype, but mm -hmm. 
a piece, a zero, let's say, an origo piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we got the news that we are accepted at Art Basel, which is a big thing for us because it's our first participation in Art Basel at ACB, uh, as a Hungarian gallery, we said, wow, but there's this unlimited section mm -hmm. and it would be so nice to just try something mm -hmm. there. And um, knowing that Selma has been doing these really spectacular large scale uh, paintings on metal, who also, which are also very catchy mm -hmm. uh, visually because of the um, of, of the like the raw material, which is uh, which is car cars car parts or other things we said wow maybe that's that's something to aim for because people love her people love her story it's so touching the way that she elevated from that very how to say challenging background being a young girl roma artist in bosnia i'm very curious about uh, the the next months because she will also decide where to live if she moves from Amsterdam or if she stays there, um, what projects she can uh, start working on as soon as she will find her new studio. So this is a very exciting time in, in her life and for us as well. I hope so. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Hi, can you Hi. please tell us something about Maria's work you are presenting here at Art Basel this year? Yeah, so we're obviously always honored mm. uh, to show Maria Bartoszova's work. She's most definitely one of the most iconic and important female artists um, in Eastern Europe. And we've been working for quite a long time with her family, whose mission is to protect and um, strengthen her legacy so that the whole world, not just where she was in Eastern Europe can understand the importance of her work. And that culminated recently in Tate Modern yes. doing a retrospective, which yes. is probably the biggest accolade any artist can have. And can you maybe tell us something about the particular pro yes. objects? Yes, absolutely. So um, Bodshova's work, she worked in three mediums, plaster, aluminium and bronze. And with this work, she used to go hiking quite a lot on walks and she'd collect rocks and then she would integrate them into her work. And there's very few wall-based pieces where she's applied the rocks and this is one of them. So it's a very important work. Um, and obviously plaster was her signature material, but then it also can expanded into other medium too. Yes, and what about the X? Yes. Yeah, so X is obviously a really important um, metaphor and symbol um you know its iconography has been used by many many artists and um, the most obvious would be brancusi for instance but even tracing back to netherlandish iconography it's there as a symbol obviously of fertility uh reba uh possibility um with maria's eggs often you see that in terms of these two not always but this, this egg is fragmented, this egg is empty, this egg is punctured, it's empty. So there is an emotional angst in her work, which I think specifically comes through in the 80s, where you have this focus on organic forms and nature, you know, melting snow, rain, um, erosion in the landscape mm. with rocks. But there's a fragmentation in the 80s to do with to do with this symbol, you know, it's it's not a whole egg. Mm. So it, it isn't, you know, it's a complex work. It's not just, oh, these are symbols of nature. It's much more emotional than that. There was layers of emotional turmoil in her life and in her work. And I think that's what makes it so, um, it's sort of like it's on, it's able to uh, reside on this in-between space 
And there's a kind of tension in her work, which I think is really, really important. Yeah, it's also really related to like her uh, human body and yeah. motherhood and all these yeah, topics. Absolutely. I mean, obviously the egg with fertility, um, her being a mother, you know, by the 80s, were we not having any more children? Wow. You know, the empty womb, wow. but also always coming back to nature. Wow. And symbolism. She had her own language, her own vocabulary, which I think is the biggest compliment you can give to any artist if they've created their own world and their own vocabulary. And when you see Maria's work, you know it doesn't belong to anybody else but her. And you enter into this amazing kind of quiet, but um, sort of uh, slightly tumultuous world. And and I, I always think that she was kind of like subtle and very like uh, minimalistic, also yeah. with colors, uh, yeah. monochromatic. Yeah. But I, I believe that she was also a bit of punk because yeah. because she did also these installations on the on the on the trees yeah. and in yeah. the nature. So I, yeah. I believe there is something like more like punky. Is first of all, highly intelligent. It was radical. It was pioneering. And that always reflects, especially of a woman working in that time in a predominantly male environment, certainly the art world was there, you know, there's a lot of grit there. Um, but I think ultimately it all comes back down to natural forms and female, her relationship with that and her body. Um, it's by no means, you know, when you look at someone like Brancusi, it's very polished and but this is not what Maria's work is about. You know, it's about life, erosion, nothing staying the same, ephemeral. It's um, And the works in the trees were just... You know, they were, they were so ahead of their time, spectacular. And obviously, because they were in nature, they they also did not survive. Mm. They eroded, like life. This was Art Basel 2023. If you liked our report, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, find more on our social media and website. And if you like my T-shirt, you can buy it on our eShop. See you next year. <laughs>